In this video, let's start doing some preliminary engineering and refining our drainage network layout. Now we've just roughed in some inlets here and uh, we've got a corridor with curb and gutter on it and some roadway inlets. And But we've done no engineering calculations to determine if these are too far apart, maybe we've got them too close. So we've got to do some inlet spacing calculations. And the inlet spacing on a curb roadway is typically controlled by what we call spread and then obviously the geometry of the roadway and any adjoinings. Spread is the width of the water once it accumulates against the gutter. How wide is it going to go out into the lane? And that is controlled by the longitudinal slope of the roadway, the cross slope of the lanes, the cross slope of the gutter, and then the geometry of the inlet as well as the rainfall obviously. So we're going to utilize some tools in here to get us some rough calculations to get a feel for this spacing. If I come to the Analyze tab and go to the Design, I'm going to open the Launch Express here. And in this toolbox, we're able to look at inlets, channels, hydrology, all kinds of real quick calculations. So let's attack the inlets first. So I'm going to go to inlets and I'm going to use, use a standard curve inlet. You have options for curves with grates, curves openings with grates, yard inlets as we call them, standard grate inlets, and then trench grates or slotted inlets. So let's come over here to our standard curve inlet and then you can input your geometry information. I want to put one that is on grade I'm going to do a uh, curb inlet that's got a 14 foot opening in it. Uh, the throat is going to be 6 inches tall. No local depression and it's got a great graphic here that shows you what each one of these are. The slope SW which is the slope of the gutter is 8% and it's in feet per feet. So 0.08. Slope of the lane is 2% it'll automatically calculate this depression. Width is the width of the gutter. See it kind of gives you some awesome, some text down here. So the width of my gutter, I'm going to do two foot gutter. And then slope is the longitudinal slope. So I'm going to first look at that big flat section at the top here. So 0.41%. And this one's different than all the others. You see how these are feet per feet and this one wants it in percent. So we're going to put 0.4 adjust your in value if you so desire and then I'm going to hit run because I'm going to compute Q and depth so that it creates me a table. When I do that you get a nice graphic here showing you the depth of your water and the width of your spread and then you also get the table down here and as I click through each one of these you'll see it um, increase or decrease. I'm going to say that the passing condition for mine is half a lane width in spread and my lanes are 12 foot wide so I want to find the value of flow that is right around 6 feet of spread so, so right here so 0 0.75 CFS so I know now that if I put any flow greater than 0 0.75 CFS to any inlet that's on that long flat slope it will have a spread that exceeds my design. So that gives me a target. So 0 0.75. <coughs> so now that we know our maximum Q for that longitudinal section, let's figure out how big an area or how long a lane area we can handle for that. So we'll come over here to hydrology and in here we can do standard rational, MRAT and modified rational and SES. I'm just going to do rational but before I can do any of this I need to adjust my IDF curve. So I'm going to come up here to IDF and in here I can go to my IDF table and you can input this information. So you can get this information in the United States from the NOAA Atlas 14 website, the precipitation frequency estimates. You can put in a location and in here it will produce all of this information. So 
I am looking at depths, not intensity, so depths. Let me make sure what we're needing to put in here. So we're wanting the intensity value. So I need to come over here and switch this to intensity. And we come down here. And I'll just double click to make sure it's updating for me. And now down here I've got my intensity values in inches per hour for each one of these time steps and each one of these return events. And I can print this store it in my project location if I so desire but I'm going to take this information and import it or input it into this IDF table. I want to pause the video and put that in real fast so you don't have to see me do it. Now I've only keystroked in the two year and the ten year just to save some time but when you're typing these in I want to say make sure you hit OK and it's not going to close the dialog box like you would think it does, but hit OK. Don't switch between these graphs or these tabs or it's going to reset the table. So click OK. And then if you're doing this work um, in a municipality or in a location and you're doing this a lot, you may want to save this IDF so that you can recall it in the future. Maybe put it somewhere centrally located for all of your team. So now I come over to my IDF curve and I can see it and it looks like a good IDF curve for those two so I will exit. Now that I've got an IDF we'll come in here and we're just going to do some basic rational equations. Now remember we know our max uh, Q. So what we're going to do is we're going to iterate through acres until we get close to that Q value is what we're going to do. So let's put a runoff coefficient since it's just the lanes and click this ellipsis and then you can do all things, all kinds of areas if you want, but we're just going to do, um, whoop, go away, because it will not let me main, just type that in, okay, in areas here it won't let me, it will let me put in one acre for instance, but my runoff coefficient, now that I've got one acreage in here I can do that. If this was left to zero, I now have the ellipsis where I can do composite C's. So I'm going to exit this. I'm going to put in one acre. Runoff coefficient of 0.9 because it's a paved road. T sub C. We're just going to, you have all these options you can use. I'm going to do user and since I know it's on pavement my time of concentration is going to be less than five minutes. Typically you don't calculate less than five minutes. And now we'll come down here to our distribution and duration and notice that I can't really edit those. Rescinding limb if you want to play with that. So here's our frequency. We can choose two or whatever. I'm going to choose 10 year. And my target Q is 0.75. And I'm going to hit run. And now we've got runoff from each one of these acres for one acre. So we set our um, T sub C at 5 and the definition of rational equation is that the Q peak is always at your time of concentration. So if I come down here to 5, I can see that my Q is 9.80 for runoff hydrograph. And we've got some additional data here for outflow and detention that we're not really worried about but we're looking for 0.75 so one acre is way too much so you just kind of iterate through this so I'm going to run it again come down to five minutes still way too high run it again we're close 0 0.58 so 0.15 too high you can see I just kind of half it since I'm manu having to do manual iterations here. 1.7. So somewhere between at 1.11 acres, somewhere between 0.11 and 1.2 acres is what I want. So 1.11 acres. Well, now I have that. What does that tell me? Well, I can come over here to my calculator, and I can say 0.11 acres 
at 43560 square feet is 4,791 square feet. And we said that we're normally ground. The only water coming to the road is the road. So, and my lanes are 12 foot with two foot curbing or two foot gutter, so 14. So if I divide this by 14, I know the linear footage of lane ish that I can handle and get that spread in that longitudinal section. And I would make note of this and then I would go into my design. So I'll minimize this, get back over to here. So that tells me that in the 0.41%, which is only this 150 feet here from the high point, every 300 feet would be enough. So telling me that I can put this first line of inlets right at the very end of where this grade break is, so somewhere in this area along this station, so somewhere around station 4 plus 41. So I don't even need inlets at 500, I could pull them all back to 4 plus 50. And that's how I would iterate through the spacing of these and repeat the steps for this steep and then that would tell me the maximum that I could have here which should be far greater and then you can place your inlets in that way. I just wanted you to see how you could utilize this quick tools to use those steps to get the placement of your inlets according to spread.